All right, welcome to the Robert Show. We are here at Data and Analytics Gartner Summit in Orlando, and look who I have with me, Roman, CPO at Axel Data. Roman, a very good friend, such amazing insights that he shares, and he's not an unfamiliar face to the data and AI community. So, Roman, welcome to the Robert Show. I'm excited to host you today and learn more about data observability, about Axel Data, about data observability and AI, and much more. Excellent. Well, thanks, Ruby. First of all, great fan, big fan of your show. Thank you. Um, so excited to be here today with you. Awesome. This is great. Uh, just for our audience, would you like to introduce yourself? Tell us a little about what Axel Data is doing in this sure. space, and uh, just in general, a little about data observability as well. Okay. Excellent, Ruby. Well, uh, my name is Ramon Chen, and yeah. I'm the Chief Product Officer at Excel Data. Right. Uh, and uh, I formerly was the Chief Product Officer at Relteo, the Master Data Management Provider, for many, many years. So my entire career has been built on data management and analytics, right. and now AI and data observability. And it's been very exciting for me to get into the world of data observability, because yep. it's an emerging category. Uh, featured, as you pointed out, here at Gartner quite significantly. Exactly. And the way we think about it at Excel Data is that ex uh, data observability needs to be all in one, meaning right. that it encompasses all of the different pillars, including observing the data, the data quality, but also the cost aspect, which is also very right. critical. And uh, at Excel Data, we're very excited that we're the one of the only uh, companies that does all of the pillars of Gartner's data observability. Okay, that's fantastic. You brought a very important point in terms of, you know, obviously Gartner recognizing the data observability category. Yeah. And that is something I'm very interested in because I've seen data observability and I've worked with, obviously, Axel Data, I've worked with other vendors in the space as well. And it has grown massively. It has. So, can you tell us a little more about the recognition and uh, how are you seeing the space as well moving in the future? Where do you see it going? Yeah, well, starting with the Gartner Show uh, yeah. here today, with the analysts across the board cover data observability. Melody Xian, who's one of the principal analysts yes. who owns the data observability, and also together with Jason Med, own the data quality category. They just published the data quality magic quadrant. I saw that, As yeah. you saw. And interestingly, I don't know if you noticed, but if you look at the Magic Quadrant research note, there are 21 mentions of data observability oh, wow. in the research note. It really means that uh, the customers and the corporations out there are thinking about data observability beyond data quality. Exactly. Because it covers yeah. so, so much more. True. Okay, this is fantastic information. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. I know a lot that you are also, uh, you know, it, it, just coming up in the in the product itself, you're doing so much, yes. right? Do you want to give a sneak peek into what exactly are the new things that are happening sure. in the data observability? I would love to. That, I, love uh, to. I, I know it, it could be a show and tell as well. I love the background as well. There you uh, go, yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, step into my kitchen. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I'll show you. So, essentially, you know, like all good data observability, we start at the source, right, where the data comes in. Right. Because one of the goals of data observability is to shift left the data quality to make the quality of the data and the processing at the source. And the source can be not just a modern data stack, not just the cloud, but uniquely, Excel Data is one of the only companies, as you know, because of our heritage and Rohit, our CEO and team, that we handle on-premise as well. And this yeah. is critical for large organizations who exactly. have a myriad of legacy environments, Teradata, Hadoop, and so forth, in addition to Snowflake and the cloud, and then hybrid environments as well. But the, but the challenge here, why not many companies in the data quality uh, and data observability space can actually shift left, is the petabyte scale volumes that you Love encounter. It. Yeah, right? exactly. When you get into this particular area, and Excel Data is uniquely able to handle this level of scale. In fact, we recently passed half an exabyte, that's 500 petabytes oh my right, God. of data that's processed huge. per yeah. month, right, with all of our customers. That's the, the per month volume that runs through our platform. It's wow. truly mind boggling the kinds of data that we're yeah. looking at. But when you get through, and you can see the, this is a very simple diagram, by the way, just yeah. simplified now, yeah. but quality is number one having rules and policies that are unique and customizable. Anomaly detection, everybody needs that. Machine learning capabilities True. and AI yeah. that process it. And this is the landing zone, fundamentally. 
Then there right. are things, not to get into the nuances, like data and schema drift, which go beyond traditional data quality, right. and data reconciliation, and that is checking that data made it through its transformations and pipelines all the way to its final destination. Now, along the way, all sorts of interesting things can happen in these pipelines, and the goal of data observability is to surface exactly where the problems occur but more importantly, what we're doing is bringing AI to bear so that you can predict that these things might break even before they do. Yeah. So the idea is to be preventative and prescriptive. Beforehand. Beforehand, exactly. 100% exactly. important. And then the other aspect here is compute optimization. If you're observing it, why not understand what the cost of it is exactly. in wow. order to process, yeah. right? Because understanding cost understanding value of the data once it reaches its end state, right. and the health, those three variables are critical to making correct technical and business decisions using data observability. I love it. And this is well explained, uh, and, and love it how you kind of, you know, making the infrastructure look so easy for the enterprises out there. Yeah. Talking about that, I know we, we, you know, we were talking about AI off air, and there's always so much happening in the AI space, like everyone wants to learn about AI. That's but right. I'm kind of also thinking about, you know, what's the angle for data observability and AI? Is there something that you are kind of looking at, and if you would like to share with our audience, it would yeah, be great. Yeah, of course. So obviously we can use AI to improve the data observability process itself. So right. we baked in AI and large language models and co-pilot capabilities into our product oh, so wow. that you can actually better use and configure and self-remediate and understand the flow of the data and the rules and policies that typically would get applied mm. without you having to reinvent the wheel every single yeah, time. exactly. And the AI can learn from the flow of your data and the behavior as to what rules and what profiles to suggest. But the goal, the real goal, is you can see that the destination yes. for data observability is not only dashboards, but AI and ML, ML itself. As well. yeah. So the quality that you create will drive the, the uh, lack of hallucinations, hopefully, right? Yeah. With clean, reliable, trusted data, data to feed these AI models. Now, the other thing that we should mention, because this is an increasing topic, if you go to the Gartner sessions, you'll hear a lot about active metadata. Active metadata, right? right. And that's what Excel data uh, excels at, if you yeah. the pun, right? Uh, because we take the metadata, not just from the pipelines and the individual tools, but we also partner with catalog vendors and governance vendors, and we operationalize governance. Right. Now, what does that mean? For many years, you cataloged a lot, you created governance policies, but you could never use it to respond to business conditions. It was more of a defensive measure. Exactly. Today, operational governance with data observability is very powerful because you can take that information that you've collected and put it to use as data the, is flowing throughout the yeah, system. Exactly. So I think that's key as well. But AI and ML will benefit not only from the governance, responsible AI, but also the quality of the data. I love it, and uh, thanks for sharing it so yeah. smoothly and keeping it so easy for our audience as well. Yeah. And uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of people might want to reach out to you, uh, you know, obviously understanding the AI game in the data observability space, yeah. because it's, I'm pretty sure it's new for a lot of people on there. It is, it is, and, we're all uh, learning together. But yeah, yeah. we all are learning. So uh, for, for our audience, if they want to reach out to you, but also learn from the resources, I know Excel Data has a lot of resources too. Yes. What can they, where can they reach out, what can they do? Well, with the many things, obviously you can send us an email to info at xldata.io, okay. or we have a free trial. Oh, wow. Uh, so you can actually get your hands on the product. Nice. If you go to xldata.io slash free dot trial, right. you can actually just try it out for yourself. Now, not only do you try it out, for cost optimization, which is one of the things actually we did not mention. Yeah. What we do also here is that with Snowflake and Databricks and Microsoft ADF, we can actually show you the cost of using the product oh, and identify wow. inefficiencies as you're using these very, very valuable, right. but often quite expensive to use products. Exactly. No, and by accident, people might overrun with their bills and things like that. Yeah. We can actually help save money. now. The great thing, Ravi, 
the money you save there can go right to Gen AI. Gen AI. Right? Because a lot of people don't know where this money's going to come from yeah, to exactly. fund all these Gen AI projects. But if you apply the data observability cost optimization of our product, you could find money that could be redirected towards Gen AI initiatives, still running on Snowflake and Databricks, but getting more for your bang for your buck, if you will. Spot on. Yeah. I, I love it because it's exactly similar to something that I spoke to one of my friends, Arun Nandi. Yeah. He is a, a senior director at Unilever. Yeah. And I was talking about the budgets. And he was like, we need to cover the budget from the data yeah. stack itself yeah. for AI. Yeah. And this is exactly how we do it. It, right? is, it is amazing how many yeah. people you know, this is not about taking money away from Databricks and Snowflake. This is about optimizing what you're using their platform for. And we are very close partners with both those companies because they want they want their products to be used in the most effective way. Right. They don't True. want waste either. We're all responsible human beings on the planet, True. right? True. We want to use the things and be responsible and to do well. I love it. Thanks for sharing all the details, yeah, Roman. No, thank you, and I'm, I'm pretty sure Axel Data will have a great event at Gartner here in Orlando, but it was such a pleasure chatting with yes, you on the Robert Show. It was long due. I know, I right? know. Well, hopefully we do it again sometime. <laughs> we'll do it soon. Yes, yeah. excellent. Awesome. Thank you everyone for Thank watching so us much. today.